What's up guys, I'm super excited. We are coming out of winter and getting into the spring and summer months. So we're gonna go over the top 10 tips on how to prepare your car for going through that process, sort of removing all the dirt and the grime and the salt. Oh, and did you hear that? Spring is coming. The birds are here. This is really exciting. This is my wife's Subaru Outback and it has been beat up all winter because we've been driving it. It's an amazing car, but now it's time to give it a bit of a facelift. That and a lot more coming up on this episode of Drive and Protect. All the way here. So I think, oh, touch up paint on. I can hear it. After an extremely long and hard winter of daily driving, the Subaru needed a hardcore cleaning to get back to a condition for easy regular maintenance. Today we're going to be going a bit nuts, but I think it's a healthy approach at least twice a year. Once after winter or in early spring, and another before the winter. Step one is to pull out all your tools, open up all the doors of the car, and remove any obvious junk or garbage that will interfere with your future vacuuming. Then, remove all the rubber floor mats if you have them, trying not to dump the salt and the dirt on the carpet in the process. Next, vacuum the car starting from the back seat going forward if you should have four doors. This helps you avoid multiple seat moves back and forth, but either way is fine. Now, work the driver's section, focusing in between the seat and the center console for hidden junk, and pay special attention to dried salt stains not caught by the rubber mat. To remove dried salt stains, click the link above for a full-length video describing the process with white distilled vinegar. If you have cloth seats, be sure to give them a quick vacuum before moving to the other side of the car. We will address cleaning the seat stains in the next step to avoid a wet butt while you're sitting in the seat cleaning the center console or the dashboard. With the interior vacuumed, next spray ammo lather on a microfiber towel and wipe the dash to remove the driving dust. Likewise, focus on the steering wheel as it tends to have the most bacteria and germs compared to any other part of the car. Spray the towel again and squeeze the wheel in back and forth motions with the towel wrapped around it. An interior brush can also be helpful here to remove the dust from buttons, switches, and the always gross cup holders. Next, clean your gas, brake, clutch, and dead pedal with ammo lather and an interior brush or just a microfiber towel. Do not use any other cleaners or greasy products on your pedals or winter floor mats. Afterwards, address any carpet or seat stains with ammo shag in an interior scrub pad. Apply three to four squirts of shag to the area, lightly wipe with the scrub pad, and blot with a microfiber towel. Notice the color change slightly because of the moisture. This will dissipate as it evaporates. I prefer to do the interior first to allow time to dry while I'm working on the exterior. Likewise, I scrub the fabric seats as the last part of the interior detail to avoid sitting on wet seats and possibly making another stain with my pants. Before we can begin addressing the exterior of the Subaru, we need to clean our tools since they weren't cleaned after the last detail. Notice the leftover dirt from the last job. Rinse the mitt, tool, and buckets with water to flush out the remaining dirt to allow the wheel soap to fight the contaminants on your wheels and not the leftover junk in the bucket. Cleaning your tools not only minimizes cross-contamination, but it actually increases the effectiveness of your formula and cleaning abilities. With your wheel bucket relatively clean, add Ammo Brute wheel soap and fill halfway with water and put it to the side. Step one of an exterior detail is to work the engine first by removing any leftover sticks or leaves caught up in the jams. Now you do this by hand, otherwise it'll become a muddy mess that goes all over the windshield and paint if you decide to do it with water first. Then lightly rinse the engine and use your wheel brush and wheel soap to clean the jams and the dirty areas of the engine. Be sure to cover any sensitive engine components if necessary. For tight spots, the small wheel woolly can also be helpful. Then rinse and remove any extra lights you may be using, close the hood, but not all the way. Don't dry the engine at this point either, save it until the end of the wash. Next, I set up my quick jacks in the driveway and lifted the car to remove the wheels. I like to keep the wheels near the respective side I just removed them from because I'm going to rotate them once they're clean. So don't just pile them up on the side and forget which wheels go where, especially if you have the same size tires, it can be confusing. With all the wheels off, inspect the brakes, shocks, and rubber lines for leaks or cracks. Now, I don't pretend to be a master mechanic, but I can at the very least know if something looks weird or leaky, and then discuss it with my mechanic ASAP. First, rinse the wheel wells with water to knock off any heavy dirt. Then mix Brute and Ammo Boost in the Power Washer Reservoir. If you don't have a power washer, you can also use the Ammo Aerator as well. But remember to avoid cross-contamination with the same aerator. Use one for soap products and another for frothy. Now, with the wheel wells covered in Brute and Boost, scrub the components with your wheel brush or wheel woolly in an effort to remove caked on road salt. 
Secretly, besides vacuuming, this is the most satisfying part of any detail. It's not uncommon to spend 30 minutes listening to music and endlessly cleaning your suspension, so don't say I didn't warn you. Repeat the same steps for the other three wheel wells. After the wheel wells are free of salt and dirt, I turn my focus onto each individual wheel. Step one is to apply your wheel cleaner. In this case, it's Ammo Plum on both the front and the back of the wheel. Clean the front first to allow the back a minute or two of dwell time as the inner barrel is usually dirtier than the front. Then flip the rim over. Notice the intense purple as the embedded iron fillings are being chewed up. I always use a black foam cushion to avoid scratching the rim on the ground. Now I got this at Home Depot a few years ago for about $3. It's also great for kneeling in the driveway. Then scrub the back of the rim and thoroughly rinse. You can also clay your rims if they're very old or neglected. Now these are relatively new, so it was a pretty quick process. Check out the link above for a crazy man's way of cleaning his disgusting yet beloved rims. As a last step with the tire and wheel, I quickly inspect the rubber for proper depth or uneven wear, screws or nails, and to remove any tiny pebbles stuck in the tread. Now this is sort of like popping pimples. It's oddly satisfying despite it being very weird. Now one down, three to go. Once the wheels are done and put off to the side, I quickly pre-rinse the car, then soak the paint with a 50-50 mixture of ammo foam and ammo boost to remove the salt from the seams and the tight areas of the frame. Now, be forewarned, this technique requires a hose and a lot of product, so doing this technique for your weekly wash is probably a bit overkill, but to each his own. Then I used a wand extension to reach and soak the undercarriage with foam and boost as well. While Boost is working on the salt, fill up your wash buckets with foam and Boost three quarters full with water. After a minute or two of dwell time, rinse the soap and Boost off your paint and start a regular hand wash with your mitt. However, in this case, I'm using a 400 GSM microfiber towel. The truth is, I'm testing this new technique as a safer way to clean or lift the dirt than traditional wash mitts. I'll have my results and conclusions of this technique in the next few episodes. After my final rinse, I decided I needed to quickly clay the top side or the horizontal parts of the paint and the driver's side of the car because I left it out under a tree while I was cleaning the R8 inside the garage the other day. So I don't need to clay the entire car, just the spots I feel require it. But use your judgment on your particular car. If it needs it, do it. If it doesn't, then don't. After clay, I quickly rinse again in case any contaminants are lifted but are just sitting on the surface at that point. Next, I soak a microfiber towel and dry the paint without hydrate because we're going to be applying a fresh coat of reflex later. Normally, using hydrate on a damp towel will help lubricate the paint during the drying process and leave behind a protectant, but since reflex is being layered on immediately after this, we avoid using hydrate before the reflex application. Once the car is pretty much dry, then open up all doors, trunk, and hood. I like to dry the engine and hood jams first with compressed air and an old microfiber towel that's not going to be used on the paint again. For the door jams, I use a 50-50 mixture of Boost Winter Wash and water in a spray bottle to clean the lower portions of the door, especially behind the wheels. These areas are notorious for collecting sand and salt and eventually rusting out. Spray the jams and seals, then agitate with your interior brush and wipe with a microfiber towel. This process will leave behind helpful corrosion inhibitors that will slow the rate of oxidation. If you have compressed air, you can blow your rubber seals out afterwards as a final step. With the salt gone, I add a fresh coat of Ammo Mud moisturizing gel to freshen up the rubber seals. Squirt some onto an old microfiber towel and place between your fingers while pinching and sliding along the seal. I finish up the doors with a quick shot of hinge lubricant. Now it's not very pretty, which is annoying to look at, but it's not as annoying as a squeaky door, so I can live with the mess, sort of. Repeat on all the other door jams. Next, I use ammo mud on the plastic wheel wells because they're easy to get to with the wheels off. This will brighten up the plastic and help it repel water or junk from your wheels if you should pick some up on your next outing. This process is oddly satisfying as well, as you can tell from my 50-50 shot. Once I was ready to put the wheels back on, I rotated them for even wear. Be sure to consult your owner's manual for this process. Before I mount the wheels back on the car, I add Ammo Gelé wheel wax to the inner barrel to help keep the brake dust from sticking when I'm cleaning again with the wheel woolly next week. If you don't have Gelé, then skin is a great option as well. Buff clean and repeat on the face of the rim when you're done. 
Next, and because I'm completely insane, I like to add ammo mud to the inside of the rubber. Clearly, no one's going to see it, so why does it matter? Now, I like to keep the sidewall rubber as moisturized as possible. However, I really only do it when the wheel is off. Again, is there any scientific proof that this is important? Well, not that I know of, but it certainly makes me feel a whole lot better to protect both sides of the rubber when it's convenient to do it. Next, remount the wheels in their new location and be sure to torque them to your car's specific specifications and repeat on the other three wheels. I also like to double check my tire pressures as they can fluctuate as the temperature begins to warm up, so keep an eye on them as the seasons change. Finally, I add ammo mud to the engine to bring back a bit of the deep color and to give me that new car feeling. Now it's time to release the quick jacks and pull your car inside to work on the paint protection steps if you have a garage. Now if you don't, that's cool. Just try to work out of blistering sunlight or in very windy environments. All right, after all that, we pulled the car inside and I know you guys are asking yourself, do I have to go through all those steps? No, you do not. You don't have to jack it up. You can do one tire at a time. You don't have to do any tires at a time. You can just, you know, stick a wheel woolly in there, whatever you're comfortable with. But I wanted to show you the whole thing that I do on my wife's car uh, to keep these things looking amazing. So that's number one. Number two is the car looks pretty good as it is right now. And you're okay, cool. We're done. I'm going to put more protection on it in the form of two layers of reflex and two layers of skin. We'll do that in a second. But I wanted to make the point, the car looks pretty good because we put this on before winter. So put it on before winter, before we got into like the fight, you know, the attack of all the stuff that's out there. And now we're doing it as winter is winding down. We're kind of re-initiating uh, that, that protection, re-layering that protection. And it's going to continue to look good. So a lot of you, um, you know, I get a lot of emails asking like, hey, can I put something on my car and then never have to touch it again? It just doesn't exist like that. I call it the magic pill syndrome. So you're gonna have to, I don't care how great or amazing some sort of you know layer that you're gonna put on you, you have to maintain it. Just like uh, going to the gym, you, to be Mr. Uh, Universe like Arnold Schwarzenegger, you gotta eat the right food. You gotta work out eight hours a day, that kind of thing. So just keep in mind, there is no magic potion you can put on here. So this is how I kind of go through that process if you want your, your car to look a certain way. So just keep that all in mind. So the next step is we are now gonna put ammo reflex on two layers. The first step when applying reflex is to thoroughly soak or prime the foam so that it's smooth on the paint and doesn't feel grabby. If it does feel grippy, then you need more even coverage on the foam with reflex. Apply it in straight line motions and allow two to three minutes for it to cure. Keep in mind, reflex can be used on black plastic trim as well. Now after about three minutes, wipe with a clean microfiber towel to remove it. Notice the ridiculous reflection after just one coat. Once I completed the first layer, give it about an hour to cure before adding a second coat of reflex. During that hour of downtime, I always check and clean or replace both my air filter and my cabin filters on the car. Again, consult your owner's manual, but it's usually relatively easy to do. In my case, the filter wasn't that bad, so I cleaned out some of the larger debris and decided to replace it on my next overhaul in a few months. While I'm waiting for the reflex to cure after the buff off, I focused on a deep cleaning of the glass using the three towel method. The first towel is my throwaway towel and I use it to pick up any heavy grease or junk stuck in the corners of the glass. Then I follow up with my waffle weave glass towel that I want to avoid getting contaminated after the first swipe. So that's why that first towel is so important. Then I quickly follow up with a clean or third microfiber towel to remove any possibility of streaking from the second towel. Yes, I get it. It takes a bit longer, but it certainly avoids the frustration of streaky windows on a perfectly flawless car. We've all been there. When I'm done, I like to add a quick layer of Rain-X to the windows for a bit of hydrophobic nature as spring approaches. Yes, there are super duper Rain-X type products out there that will last longer than your engine and your paint plus another 100,000 years, but I don't like breathing in those fumes. It's not worth it to me. So a safe, basic product here is more than enough for me. After my second coat of reflex, I went inside and had some dinner, then came back out and added two layers of ammo skin on top of the reflex. Now think of this as your sacrificial layer or your windbreaker over your fleece, designed to take a beating and keep you dry, so to speak. Apply skin as a traditional sealant with a new foam applicator. Do not cross-contaminate applicators in any situation, but especially not here. Now after a few minutes, the skin will cure to a slight haze, as you can see here. Then remove it with a microfiber towel as you did before. When you're done, the paint looks so wet, it looks insane. Keep in mind, this is just basic Subaru paint. Nothing special or unique here, but it still looks like it's vibrating. Now, if you want this look, you have to put in the time. There's no magic pills or potions here, just a proper process or a regimen. 
For the very last step, I like to change my oil as part of the spring cleaning process. When I purchased the new car, I negotiated free lifetime oil changes, but some dealers will require you to pay for rotating the tires, changing the oil and the air filters, despite the actual oil being free, so make sure you read the fine print beforehand to avoid surprises. As always, thanks for watching and subscribe below. For more helpful how-to car care videos, visit AmmoNYC.com.